What is your opinion yeah, on yeah. high school, 16, 17? What are you gonna do for the rest of your life? How are you gonna plan for the future? How are you gonna be a millionaire with passive income oh, in the future? I was gonna be screwed. Today we're coming to you from Charleston, South Carolina, and it is a lot hotter here, so for the first time in pretty much any of these videos, I'm wearing a shirt and shorts. Huh? You might be thinking, what are we gonna talk about today? Well, today we're gonna talk about, and we'll get some insight from Graham here as well, in terms of what it's like to actually get started, and what it's like when you're 16 and 17, and you wanna start getting into real estate. Folks ask me all the time, hey Kevin, what were you like when you were 16 and in high school? And here's the thing, people think, oh, successful real estate agent now, probably awesome at high school, probably awesome at everything. Not really. In fact, I probably was very similar to a lot of you folks. If anything, you guys were in a lot better situation than I was. Let's go into some of the details. Back in high school, I didn't care about school. In fact, I was 98% certain I was just gonna stop after high school, not go to college, and I would just end up becoming a police officer because I was a police explorer. I already had three years working for the police department. It was just sort of on a voluntary basis, which was actually an amazing learning experience. But that didn't work out. And the reason it didn't work out is because of a girl. What? Oh, that's right, I met Lauren when I was 16 years old on a trip to Paris. It was like an EF Tours exchange sort of style three week trip. And my life changed. We were long distance for a year and I ended up in California for my senior year of high school. That means all of the people that I knew in high school I didn't know anymore. I didn't go to my own graduation because I didn't care about school. When I was at my high school in Florida, I was probably the least popular person. I was one of those people that's like, oh yeah, I'm in AP everything, but I was getting like straight C's at everything. So it didn't work out too well. And I don't think I passed a single AP test either. But the point of me sharing this with you is to share some motivation and how I went from where I was to where I am now. I get so many questions about, well, how do you get to this place? Where you own investment property and you have stability and you have passive income. Here's the biggest piece of advice. When I moved to California at 17 years old, I got a job working at Jamba Juice. That really, really helped me surprisingly after my first six months there getting a performance review and realizing, oh man, I gotta, I gotta try a little bit harder to connect with people and work on that customer service aspect of things. The manager kind of told me I had to do that. All of a sudden I kind of realized, wow, okay, let's try this. And it gave me that real world experience, even though I wasn't good at school, to figure out, wow, okay, well I can be good at taking care of people. So when I moved to California as well, I got rid of all my AP courses and I took everything which is called college prep level, which is just a, a little bit above normal. So all the classes were easy for me. So then at that point I had 4.0 and I used that to get into a community college while getting my real estate license. So when I was 17, end of 17, turning 18, I thought, all right, I'm doing this customer service thing. I'm not going to go into law enforcement anymore. The experience I had from law enforcement, if anything, kind of jaded me against customer service, which is kind of a bad thing. I hate to say it, I really respect law enforcement, but it does jade you. What's up? Hi. Come over there. I do not look like me, Kevin, right now. This is scary. I'm about to meet people I don't know. <laughs> Let's go say hi. How y'all doing? What's up? Kevin. Hey. Awesome group of folks here for a bachelor party in Charleston, South Carolina. This is a great place for that. What's up, man? I took essentially simple classes so that I could ace them. And what I did is because the classes were so easy and I had to put very, very little effort into school, I put all of my effort into working at Jamba Juice or getting a better job. Anything I could do to get a better job to me was a good thing. So then I moved to Red Robin and I wanted to become a server. Of course, then eventually, when I didn't become a server because they wouldn't promote me for whatever reason, I just went full time into real estate. So I did end up going to a local community college for two years, which was great because all of my bad grades wouldn't matter anymore. I didn't do well in high school, so I wanted those to disappear. So what did I do? Did well my senior year. California residency. 
two years at a community college, supporting myself, then transferred to UCLA after that. I did get a political science degree, but it was at least the degree which my parents required, and you know what? I actually really like that major for working with uh, people and society. It, it, awesome. Loved it. I, I wouldn't have picked a different major. By the way, I forgot to mention, people ask me all the time, what about the SAT? Look, if you're trying to get into a prestigious school, Absolutely, you gotta study for it, train for it. I didn't know what the SAT was until 10th grade. I had parents from Germany that were completely clueless when it came to, hey, it's important to have good grades in high school. So I didn't even realize until 10th grade that, ooh, I should've cared about my grades. So it didn't really set me up for success super well when it came to that sort of high school grade thing. So don't feel bad if you didn't do well with that either. The most important things to know are even if you screw up in high school and you don't get good grades, you can succeed at real estate. You don't need a college degree. No one cares about any of this stuff. So if you think you're behind because you're not going into Harvard or Berkeley or, or some incredible Ivy League, don't worry about it. You can still catch up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask Graham a little bit about what he thinks and his thoughts and about what his age was like at 16. What were his priorities? Was he going to school? Did he go to college? Does college matter? What are his thoughts and his perspectives? And we'll see how they sort of align. Let's go find him. And we'll do that in a moment. Guys, I'm in the jungle, found another realtor. I don't know if you can tell. There he is. He's working in the wild. Graham's responding to you guys. Right there, there we go. So make sure to comment. And smash that like button. That like button. Supposed to be in the video. I don't know what he's doing. And now we're gonna talk to Graham and see what his opinion is. What is your opinion yeah, on high school, 16, 17? What are you gonna do for the rest of your life? How are you gonna plan for the future? How are you gonna be a millionaire with passive income oh, in the future? I was gonna be screwed. In high school, <laughs> in high school, I had such bad grades. I was actually comparing D's and F's with one of my friends to see who got more D's. Oh my gosh. Like no joke. It was terrible. I hated school, hated tests. I was a bad test taker, never did homework, I slacked off. I did the minimum to basically just not get expelled in terms of my grades. I was screwed. Oh, you know what, funny story actually, I made up a story my senior year of high school uh, that I had this rare condition of sleep apnea that prevented me from getting a full night of sleep every night, and so that's the reason why I had to miss my first two classes and come in at 10.30. And I Makes printed sense. out a fake doctor's letterhead on Google, signed it, and turned it in and they believed it, and for the entire year of senior year, I'd get to school at 10.30 instead of like eight. So you can see the uh, benefits of high school that have been yeah. bestowed upon us in our course of real estate investing. How about, how about those SATs? Let's talk about those. What SATs? <laughs> What's, how about ACT? I didn't take, oh, you, know, you know what, actually I took my SAT, didn't study for it, uh, woke up one morning, just did it. I think my score was like 1100. I mean, it was, it was really right. bad. Yeah, no, for real though, yeah, but yeah. I didn't care. It just didn't matter. Like, I, I knew I was never gonna use it. I thought it was the stupidest thing ever. Yeah, yeah well, it's mostly a college entrance exam anyway. And yeah. If you're not planning, now, did you end up going to college? No, didn't get into college, right in, which is the bigger one. Right into so, real estate then? Yeah, well, I was planning to go to college, but because my grades were so bad, my SAT scores were so low, I didn't get in, and that's, that's what forced me to have to pursue something else, which happened to be real estate. So it really goes to show that, hey, SAT, ACT, AP courses, college, all of that aside, you could still be a financial success even if you didn't plan out high school or you planned it out and it just didn't work out the way you had hoped it would work out. So you want to be fancy and have Ivy League statues? Then just go find one, like this one in South Carolina. You don't have to go to an Ivy League to get a statue. Hey, and that's nothing against you Ivy Leaguers. I admire that. I wish I went to Harvard. That was the school I wanted to go to. That was the school I debated at. I made it to semifinals in student congress debate. I miss that kind of stuff. I'm sorry, I wasn't gonna make it as an alum over there. I think an important clarification is to say that, yeah, you know, maybe grades in high school aren't gonna necessarily predict your success or future when it comes to finances, but they certainly make it a lot easier. See, when I went to college, community college, I got straight A's because I knew I needed to get straight A's to get into UCLA. So I did, I just put my mind to it. It was never a matter of, oh, I can't do calculus, I can't do this. No, it was as long as I put my mind to it, I was able to figure it out and I was able to get an A in the class. 
class. And of course I went to UCLA and then as soon as grades didn't matter again, what did I do? I didn't really care again because I was already selling real estate. So don't take this video and if you have the choice, try to get good grades. But if you've already messed up, it's not the end of the world. You could still succeed. So then a pretty common follow-up question always is, well, what kind of work should I do when I'm in high school? What kind of job should I have? The best one that I always found is one where you can really learn to engage with customers because ultimately, pretty much any job you're doing, you're going to be dealing with either the customer satisfaction aspect of the business, the forward-facing side of work, or you're working with your colleagues and your managerial staff, and you have to be able to work with people and dealing with different customers every day and different preferences and different desires really helps you make that happen. Now can I check you in for your flight? Because I'm behind a desk and I'm about to get kicked out. Oh, maybe it's just a way of saying there's no right or wrong answer. We may have found a smash corner. I think so. What's up, man? The Charleston Internet.